Hi there, Garrett Blevins here with what used to be my favorite intermediate strength template, 531. Now this has been around forever. Jim Windler put this out. There are tons of variations out there. I'm gonna try to cut through that back to the base program and give you some of my thoughts on why it's a good program and also where maybe there could be some improvements. Now, before I get too far into this, I wanna say this video is sponsored by Evolve AI. If you are questioning some of these templates and the rigid structures of these programs that can't be changed, you might wanna check out Evolve AI. It uses AI to make your programming for you. You can tailor it and tweak it and adjust it, and it's all bound together by scientific principles. So check that out. Thanks again. I'm happy that they're sponsoring this and I can bring you this cool information. So. Let's start with the lifts. You got the squat, bench, deadlift, and overhead press. As you've seen with many of these programs, that's the big four. Those are those main compound barbell movements that you're using to drive progress. Now, every cycle, you're gonna increase the lower body compound movements by 10 pounds and the upper body by five. This is gonna happen because those lower body movements just, they get stronger faster than the upper body. The muscles are bigger. And so you're gonna be able to progress faster on those. Now. You should start with a training max of 90%. This is critically important. If you start too heavy on 531, you're gonna stall out too soon. You're not gonna make progress. You're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna be on Reddit. You're gonna be just fuming and just keyboard warrior about how this program sucks. It doesn't suck. You suck. Follow the program. Use 90%. Move it on. Now, the week, which I'm calling it a week, but it's really cycle to cycle. If you do it four times per week, since there are four workouts, one focused on each of these lifts per week, then you're gonna finish the cycle in four weeks. However, if you do it three, just follow those in order. So you do like three day a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Try not to lose your mind being on and off cycle. But it is, in all seriousness, a good idea to learn how to not have to rigidly adhere to a seven day period of time when you're doing your programming. Sometimes it is good to extend that out. Basically though, you can just flow through those workouts, follow them in order. The normal order people do these in is going to be overhead press, deadlift, bench, squat. That is the normal way people do it. But again, it's been out forever. It's been flipped around. It's been packaged, flipped, turned inside out all the way. So just do it however works best for you. Make sure you keep those upper body and lower body movements separated. Gotta keep them separated. If, uh, if you can. Now, the workouts themselves follow a very simplistic cycle. So block one, you would be doing all of your main movements when you do that workout for 65, 75, 85% for five reps. That last set of 85% is a plus set, which means you're gonna do as many reps as possible, also called an AMRAP. So you do five set or five reps at 65%, five reps at 75%, 85%, you go almost to failure. You don't wanna have complete form breakdown. You don't wanna injure yourself. You don't wanna die. Um, it's not that extreme, but you wanna push it pretty hard. You're not supposed to be leaving three or four reps in the tank here. You need to be having some form breakdown, some technical failure, and really grinding through those reps. Now, because this is not actually 85% of your one rep max, but 85% of 90% of your one rep max, it's actually something like uh, 76, 77%, I think. Math on camera, excuse me if I'm off there, but you're not actually using that heavy of a weight in comparison to your one rep max. For example, let's just say your, your true max is 300 pounds, 90% of that is going to be, oh boy, 270. And then you're using 85% of 270. Um, and so it's gonna be substantially lower. This actually is gonna come out, you know, if it's, you know, 76.5%, that's about equal to a normal 10 rep max. So on your plus set of five on your first week for all of your lifts, you should not be failing to get five. And that's why it's so important to start at a 90% training max and use that to build momentum. Now, the next week uh, or the next cycle, if you're not doing a four times per week, you're gonna go 70, 80, 90, but you're gonna be doing triples this week. Everything is with sets of three, except again, for that last set, it's a plus set, it's an AMRAP. So you're gonna do three plus. Now, 90% of 90% is gonna probably be somewhere around a six to eight rep max. So again, a triple should be easy. You should be getting six to eight reps that first week on your plus set. Next cycle, 75% uh, for five, 85% for three, 95% for one plus. And this is where that 531 comes in again. We got 531, we got 531 all over the place. Wow, it's just all coming together. Well, actually, 
it's 95% of 90%. So that's probably somewhere around a five rep max for you. You should be getting a lot more than one rep when you are on that third cycle. Then mandatory deload. Jim Windler is very clear in almost all of his writing. Do not change the program away from how it's structured. So you are going to deload after this top set or this plus set here. You're going to use 40 to 60% of your training max, and you're going to do that for three sets of five reps, no AMRAPs in the deload. You're reducing your volume here. You're reducing your intensity. That's to release the fatigue that you've built up through the cycle. Um, and okay, now let's address Reddit warriors out there. This is a very low volume program. Let me explain why, and yes, Reddit, you are correct. It is low. In fact, it's really only one working set per week. 65% of 95% for five, that's a warm up. That you're not even feeling that. That's off the charts low in terms of RPE. That's below an RP5. It's not even registering yet. In fact, all of this is off the chart. Oop, not there. Sorry. These two off the chart low. The first two sets in every workout, they're warm ups, guys. They're just warm ups. And let's just acknowledge that they're warm ups and not say that it's really three sets or anything like that. It's not a three by five, it's a warming up to a five plus which is kind of the same as warming up to a 10 rep max. So basically week one, if you restructured it without the 90% training max and everything else, week one is basically warming, or warming up to a 10 rep max or an eight rep max, somewhere in that range. Week two is basically warming up to a six to eight rep max. Week three is basically warming up to a five rep max. And if someone handed you a program and said, hey, do a 10 rep max, an eight rep max, a five rep max, and then deload. And you probably look at that and be like, that's three working sets over like a month. I don't need a deload. You'd be right. But here's where you're wrong, Reddit. Like I like to tell you, here's where you're wrong. That's not the program. That is the base program. And that is what's called like not doing because you're not. And Wendler even says that's not recommended. You are supposed to be following this up with accessory work. And that's where the big but boring comes in, which... Let's say you're doing your squat workout. You're going to do your squat workout protocol, and then you would do that same barbell squat for five stinking sets at 10. Kill me right now. 10 with an accessory lift that's going to complement your squat weaknesses. Same with bench, same with deadlift, same with overhead press. Now, Jim Wendler has also put out just like all over the place, different variations and moderations. Yeah, maybe you do your deadlift. You do your squat main lift on the 531 protocol, then your deadlift five by 10, and then an accessory. And then on your deadlift day, you do the squat five by 10. You can move those pieces around, but basically you got your lower body days, you got your upper body days, they're oscillating, and you need to do more volume than just the 531 protocol because honestly, it's not that taxing. And additionally, if you're trying to get strong or use this for powerlifting, as many people do, you're not even touching true singles, doubles, or triples weights very often in this program at all. Now, if you use our wonderful triumvirate, or however you say that word, you're not even going to do the main lift for your five by tens. You're just going to do a bunch of accessories, usually like two accessories for five sets, of 10. That's a lot of volume. In fact, some of it is kind of junk volume, in my opinion. And that's part of my critique of this is if you're trying to get stronger, the barbell lifts are the cream of the crop. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. Oh. That is your S tier lift to make you stronger and bigger. Don't tell me the people back in the 70s weren't jacked using just mostly barbells and dumbbells and, and D-ball. Yeah, leave that alone. But those people, they didn't have all these fancy machines, all the things out there in the world today. When you walk into a gym, you see all these contraptions. They had some iron and they were pumping that iron and they were moving it. Now, they weren't afraid of higher rep ranges, but they also weren't afraid of going heavy. But, you know, you are going to, after you complete a cycle of this, whatever your training max is, you are going to be adding weight to that. There's going to be a progressive overload. But let's look at this real quick. From your first cycle, if you're a 300 pound squatter, you do your first entire run through with a 270 training max. Then you add 10 pounds, now you're at 280 and you run through it again with a 280 training max. And you run through it again after that with 290. And then on the fourth run through, you're back at your actual training max being used for these percentages, which are very reasonable percentages, even on their own, even if it is a function of your max. Now you do wanna be increasing those plus sets but you're not really going to get to hard sets of five, three, or one until you're probably six months into five, three, one. So this is a slow, repetitive process. Now, you may be wondering, what do you do if you stall? If you stall, take 90%, whatever you stalled with, and do it again. 
Now, to me, since this is a wide net that's being cast to work for a lot of people, and yes, there are some variations, the expected growth for this program is very slow, slower than what I've seen. I, I mentioned Evolve AI before. I've looked at the numbers behind the users doing that. People are making like 70 to 100 pounds on their total in a four to six month period pretty frequently, especially as novices. And since this is really based, when I say novices, I mean people who are starting their strength journey less than two years, uh, experienced lifters. It's not when you're making progress every week or once a month. No, it's when you've been training for like 10 or 12 years and you've been stalled out and you're like trying to eke out that last little bit of genetic potential. So if you've been lifting less than two years, I think you can probably progress faster than this. And this is the thing people do on 531 all the time. They get bored. It's even in the name here, big but boring. They get bored and then they want to increase their numbers and they want to keep moving forward. And that is where joker sets can come in and be helpful. Joker sets are basically where you say, hey, my 85% five rep max or five rep AMRAP uh, was actually really easy. And you just increase the weight a little bit more and that lets you jump up faster if it's there. That's reaching for those higher weights when they're there. I would advise joker sets for 531 and that's the whole thing. There are ways to adjust it. And this is a little annoying, Reddit. I may agree with you on this one. There's all this statement that, hey, don't change the program, then it's not the program. And yet there's a million varieties of the program out there that are tweaks to the program. So who gets to decide what those are? The answer is Jim Windler. He made it, he gets to decide what they are. But anyways, the point is you can make this program your own. It has worked for literally, I am sure, tens if not hundreds of thousands of people to make progress. It's a solid program that doesn't fall into a lot of the pitfalls. Many other programs do. It does not progress too fast. It does worry about fatigue management, but I would advise maybe uh, if you're going to tweak it, maybe tweak the five sets of 10 on the main lifts to something a little bit more reasonable, but get some more barbell lift volume because those are really going to push your gains. In any case, that is 531. That's the deal. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you found an appreciation for 531 and also are aware of some of the ways in which it works and why you need to start with a lower training max and that it's going to be a long time before you actually are really crushing through and really grinding and struggling to make your sets of five, your sets of three, your sets of one, and that's okay. It's going to set you up for long-term progress and development. Just make sure you don't only do nothing. Make sure you add some extra volume on the end. Look online, all over the place. There's great advice. Check it out. Hope you get on the game soon. And where we're at, blessings.